Now let's see how we can apply these things in the following examples. Let's take this inverse ratio of 11 is to 15. So remember, if you have a ratio A by B, its inverse ratio is B by A. Hence, inverse ratio of 11 is to 15, you're just interchanging the consequent and antecedent and, uh, antecedent, and it becomes 15 is to 11. So, we have among these this as the answer. Yes, and yes, we do have this as the answer. Let's take the next example. The ratio of the quantities is 5 is to 7. If the consequent of its inverse ratio is 5, the antecedent is what? So the inverse ratio of 5 is to 7 is 7 is to 5. And it is told that the consequent of the inverse ratio is 5. That means the antecedent is going to be 7. So obviously in this case, you have the answer as 7. The same thing if it is told if the consequent of its inverse ratio is 15, then this is going to be 21 accordingly. So what we have done is that we have first converted the ratio to its inverse and then compared with the condition that is given over here. Yes, so the correct answer is 7. And yes, we do have 7 as a correct answer. Let's take the next example. Now, here we have something a little more complicated. Let's see what we have. The ratio compounded of 2 is to 3, 9 is to 4, 5 is to 6, and 8 is to 10. You need to find out. It means that you're going to multiply the first term of all the ratios, and you'll get a term. Multiply the second terms of all the ratios, that is the consequence of all the ratios, and you get a term. Find the ratio of that. So if you see, it's going to be 2, that is this 2 into this 9 into this 5 into this 8 is going to be the antecedent or the compounded ratio upon multiply by the products of the consequence. So it's going to be 3 into 4 into 6 into 10. Now let's see what we have 5 we have over here. And this and this and finally we're getting 1 is to 1. So the ratio is going to be the answer mind you is 1 but here comes the meaning of ratio. We're never going to write it as 1. It's going to be 1 is to 1. So the answer is 1 is to 1. So what we have done once again is multiplied all the antecedents, found out the product, multiply all the consequence, find the ratio of these results. And you get a new ratio that is a compounded ratio of all these the answer is 1 is to 1 and yes the answer is 1 is to 1 let's take the next example let's see how we can apply what we learned okay so now here we have an example the duplicate ratio of 3 is to 4 is what remember the duplicate ratio of a is to b is a square is to b square. So the duplicate ratio of 3 is to 4 is the duplicate ratio is going to be 3 square is to 4 square, which is going to be 9 is to 16. So hence, the duplicate ratio of 3 is to 4 is 9 is to 16. Yes, and yes, it is 9 is to 16. Simple examples. Let's move further. Okay. So we learnt about subduplicate ratio. Now, the subduplicate ratio of 25 is to 36. Remember an alternative name given to subduplicate ratio, which will strike a chord and make you remember. Subduplicate ratio means the square root ratio. So the square root ratio of 25 is to 36 is root 25 is to root 36. 
which will turn out to be 5 is to 6. Now these kind of sums, it's simpler to solve them and do it. In many cases, in a few of the further examples, we will do the process of elimination where the calculation could take a longer time. But here we can use the simple process of calculation. So the subduplicate ratio of 25 to 36 is 5 is to 6. The same question if they ask you, subduplicate ratio of the inverse ratio of 25 to 36 is going to be 6 is to 5. But here is a simple case of subduplicate ratio of 25 to 36 and that's 5 by 6. That is 5 is to 6, right? Let's take another example. Okay, now here we have something a little more complicated. We have the ratio compounded of 4 by 9 and the duplicate of 3 by 4 is what? So again, it's going to be compound ratio. So you need to multiply the antecedents, multiply the consequence. But there are specifications. The ratio compounded of 4 by 9 and duplicate of 3 by 4, that is square ratio, that is 3 square upon 4 square. So that gives you 4 into 9 upon 9 into 16, which turns out to be 1 by 4. So as per the question, the ratio compounded of 4 is to 9 and the duplicate ratio of 3 is to 4 is 1 is to 4. Slightly, a little more of application you need to do. You need to read clearly these kind of questions and come to the outcome. All right, and yes, the answer is 1 is to 4. The next example could be similar to this. Let's see this one. So here we have the ratio compounded of 4 is to 9. So let's write this 4 is to 9. The next clause is the duplicate ratio of 3 is to 4. So that is the square ratio of 3 is to 4. So that is 3 square upon 4 square. The triplicate ratio of 2 is to 3. So, that is going to be the cube ratio. So, it's going to be 2 cube upon 3 cube and 9 by 7. That is, you're not doing anything to 9 by 7. So, you multiply by 9 by 7. So, let's simplify this. So, we have 4 by 9 into 9 by 4, which in any case, 9 by 16. I'm very sorry. It's 9 by 16 into 2 cube. That is 8 upon 3 cube. That is 27 into 9 by 7. Let's see what we have here. It gets cancelled here, 9 and 9. And you have also 2 will go by 2 and 9, 3. So ultimately you're left with 2 in the numerator and 3 into 7, 21. So the ratio, the compounded ratio of these four clauses is 2 is to 21. We need to take a little extra care. So the moment you put this clause, put the clause, the next clause you put it over here, the third clause you put it there, the rest is just being careful about the simplification part. So our answer for this question is going to be 2 is to 21. And yes, it is 2 is to 21. Now let's take the next example. Now here we have a case wherein you have 2s is to 3t is the duplicate ratio of 2s minus p, 3t minus p. That means this is the square ratio of this. That means on squaring this, we get this. So let's first put the simple equation. That is 2s minus p upon 3t minus p is. Is it 2s the whole square by 3t the whole square? No. This is the duplicate ratio of 2s by 3t. Hence, you don't square this. You square this. So, it's going to be squaring of this. So, in that case, on simplifying these, which one could be the answer? Now, if you look at it, you're going to square this. So, definitely the answer cannot have p. So, this is definitely out of question. Similarly, the answer cannot be 2p. It has to have p squared. So it could be either this or this. So let's quickly simplify this. So it is 2s minus p the whole square. Remember a minus b the whole square formula. 
is going to be a square minus 2ab plus b square. So it's 2s the whole square, 4s square minus 2 into 2s into p. So 2 into 2, 4s into p. So it's going to be minus 4ps and p square. So that is p square upon same way a minus b the whole square a square that is 3t the whole square that is 9t square minus 2 into 3t 60 into p so it's going to be minus 6pt plus p square is equal to 2s upon 3t this is going to take a little bit time but it also helps us brush up our funders so you multiply this with this so it's going to be 3t into 4 you're cross multiplying basically minus 4 ps plus p squared is 2s into 90 square minus 6 pt plus p squared let's open this and see 3t into 4 s square is going to be 12 s squared p minus 12 ps t plus 3 p squared t equal to this turns out to be 18 st square minus 12 pst plus 2 p square s if you look at it we have same term on both sides we can cancel this now we can collect all the p square terms on one side so we have 3 p square t and minus 2 p square s on this side you have 18 st square minus 12 s square t you can take p square common and you get 3t minus 2s on this side you can take 6 st common and you get 3t minus 2s again these two terms are getting cancelled and the answer is p square is equal to 6 st a little long but uh, we can simplify these things by a little bit of elimination over here so our answer is going to be p square is 6 st let's check whether we are right or no yes we are right so this was about a little bit of expansion happening the next uh, problem that we have is quite similar to that let's see again here p is to q is the sub duplicate ratio of p minus x the whole square is to q minus x the whole square so now this is the sub duplicate ratio of this which means that on taking the square root of this you get this in other words if you square this you get this if this is sub duplicate ratio of this, this means that this is the duplicate ratio of p by q so that means that on squaring p by q we get p minus x square upon q minus x square which also means that you take the square root of this you get this because p by q is a sub duplicate ratio of this this turns out to be p square let's quickly cross multiply simultaneously p square into q minus x square using the same logic that we did and here you have q square so you cross multiply here so you get q square into p minus x square let's open the bracket and you get p square q minus p square x square is equal to p q square minus q square x square transpose terms and you get p square q minus p q square p square x square minus q square x square so you transpose this to this side and this to this side here in these two we can take pq common and we get p minus q in these two we take x square common and you get p square minus q square and this as per a square minus b square formula turns out to be x square into p minus q into p plus q and here you have pq into p minus q p minus q p minus q cancel and you get x square is pq upon p plus q so among the various options over here this is not being satisfied any one of those so the only option that is there is none of these yes 
So thus we have a few simple examples just to check whether we thoroughly comprehended what we have learned.